We'll always remember these beloved actors for their roles on our favorite TV comedies, but they had to move on with their lives and start families, find new sources of income, or just leave the public eye. Here are the real reasons you don't hear from these sitcom stars anymore. Michael C. Morona is best known as Big Pete from The Adventures of Pete and Pete, one of the most acclaimed and surreal kids shows ever made. The narrator and the closest thing the show had to a voice of reason, Big Pete is fondly remembered by a generation of Nick fans. You know the feeling you get after you hear your favorite song for the first time? All you want to do is play it again and again, so it stays stuck in your head forever. Morona himself went on to star in several Ameritrade commercials as Stuart, Adds that anyone around then will tell you were inescapable. Morona has sparsely acted since 2004, and with good reason. He's now behind the camera and is one of the most prominent on-set electricians in Hollywood. He attended Purchase College and studied filmmaking. Since then, he's worked on shows like Elementary, Jessica Jones, Luke Cage, Blue Bloods, and The Deuce. If you watched a Marvel show on Netflix, you've probably seen Morona's work. Morona also co-hosts a podcast called The Adventures of Danny and Mike with Pete and Pete co-Pete Danny Tamborelli, where they look back on their days and, quote, wander out into the world in search of their next great adventure. Anyone raised on a steady diet of 90s Nickelodeon remembers Kel Mitchell's all-that characters like Good Burger Cashier Ed or Snakebit Coach Creighton. Even more remember his turn as the dim-witted Kel Kimball on Keenan and Kel. But while Keenan Thompson soared to new heights and remains a television fixture almost three decades later, Kel faded away. The contrast was so stark that a rumor about him being dead circulated during the MySpace days. What happened? Turns out he's doing fine. Hey! Hey! Yeah, I'm here! What's up? Well, where the swimsuit bottoms at? Keenan and Kel, as themselves, both tried out for Saturday Night Live at the same time. Only Keenan got the call. Kel then focused on making smaller movies, still did guest spots on TV, including various newer Nick shows like Sam and Cat, and started a family. He's since reunited with Keenan a few times, including doing a Good Burger reunion on The Tonight Show and as executive producers on the All That reboot. But his main focus has been his faith. Kel is a deeply religious man. He worked with his church ministry for years before becoming a licensed pastor for Spirit Food Christian Center in December 2019. He's also had parts in several Christian movies, including She Is Not My Sister. He also had a part in A True Rite of Passage, a guest spot on Dancing with the Stars, where he finished second. Kel never gets upset hearing about his past projects, though. They were an integral part of his life. In his own words, even though Will Smith has done I Am Legend and all these other great films, you still love him for Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Hilary Banks is best summed up by the phrase, Dad, I need $300. The fashionable spoiled brat with no common sense, the role of Hillary made actress Karen Parsons one of the most recognizable actresses of the 90s. The recognition carried Parsons until the new millennium, at which point the roles dried up and she disappeared from our screens. But she never went away, she just changed direction. With so few roles for African-American women in the 90s, Parsons found herself rejected or passed over often. Her career faltering and in need of a change of scenery, Parsons moved to New York. She met filmmaker Alexander Rockwell and married him in 2003. They had a daughter that same year and a son in 2007. These events changed her priorities. No longer having the time to pursue auditions and memorize lines while taking care of kids, she turned her focus to writing. In 2005, she founded Sweet Blackberry, an organization dedicated to teaching children about little-known parts of African-American history. It's since produced many animated short films with A-list voice talent. She also published a book, How High the Moon, in 2019, based on stories about her mother's experiences in the Jim Crow era South. Originally worried about what her daughter would learn in school, she's used her talents to shape the conversation and make sure children know their history. Taryn Noah Smith played Mark Taylor, the youngest son of Tim and Jill Taylor on Home Improvement. The sensitive boy turned proto-goth turned sensitive boy again was a stark contrast to his more rambunctious brothers, and the role made Smith stand out as an actor. But while Smith's life after child stardom isn't exactly dark and depressing, it is unusual. Smith quit acting after Home Improvement ended, no longer interested in performing after it consumed his entire childhood. He then briefly became tabloid fodder, partly because he married a woman 16 years his senior while he was 17, and partly because he was suing his parents after claiming they mishandled his trust fund. 
Years later, he chalked this up to a misunderstanding and reconciled with his parents. These days, Smith has had an eclectic assortment of jobs and hobbies. He's an installation artist around the country at festivals and museums, which includes a floating art gallery he built himself. He did disaster relief work in the Philippines for a year and a half in 2014. In December 2017, he temporarily moved to Corpus Christi, Texas and helped with recovery from Hurricane Harvey. Most recently, he's been teaching people how to pilot submarines. He's a member of the Community Submersibles Project, an organization based out of Berkeley, California that gives members of the public hands-on training in submarines. Amanda Burse is best known for her turn as Marcy Rhodes Darcy on Married with Children, the radical feminist neighbor of the Bundy clan, the best friend of Peg, and the nemesis of Al, Marcy was a mainstay of a popular show. You're so lucky. Even though yours is about as desirable as shredded wheat without the milk, <laughs> at least he's cheap to keep. Burse herself made headlines in 1993 when she came out as gay in an era where that was a rarity for high-profile celebrities. Since Married With Children ended, though, Burse was seldom seen in front of a camera. Why? Because she stepped behind a camera. Realizing that Marcy would always be a secondary character, Burse decided to broaden her horizons by trying her hand at directing. She turned out to have a talent for it and directed upwards of 30 episodes of Married. When the show ended, so did her acting career, so she could focus on directing. She went on to direct episodes of Dharma and Greg, Reba, and Mad TV. She also directed the big gay sketch show on Logo, which was the launch pad for Kate McKinnon's career. Burst took a break from the industry to raise her daughter, after returning, directed the web series Skirt Chasers, and made her New York theater debut in the off-Broadway play Party Face in 2018. Angus T. Jones first came to public attention as Jake Harper, the half of the titular Two and a Half Men. His later time on the show was marked by offset controversy, most notably involvement in a controversial religious movement and calling the show he worked on, quote, filth. Two and a Half Men, if you watch Two and a Half Men, please stop watching Two and a Half Men. I'm on Two and a Half Men, I don't want to be on it. Please stop watching it. He later apologized, left the show, and came back for the finale. After all that, he's mostly vanished. What's he been doing since then? Trying his best to live a normal life. Jones went to college at the University of Colorado at Boulder and enjoyed his time away from the spotlight. He distanced himself from organized religion, noting that he got, quote, pretty doomsday with my thinking, and was happy moving away from that. He slowly made his way back to acting on his own terms, including starring in Louis C.K.'s internet-based sitcom Horace and Pete. In 2016, Jones joined forces with Justin Combs, son of Sean Combs, to create Tonight, an entertainment and event company which has a minimal web presence and seems to have gone out of business. More than anything, though, he seems to enjoy living life on his own terms. He spends time with his younger brother Otto, doing his own projects at his own pace. He's yet to rule out a return to the screen, but it's fully understandable that after spending his entire childhood on a set, he'd need some time to himself. Saved by the Bell, the new class never had the cachet or fan base of the original show, even though it ran longer. Lindsay McKeon was one of the stars of the show as swimmer and goody two-shoes Katie Peterson, who transferred to Bayside in season four and stayed until the end. She later went on to star on Guiding Line as Mara Lewis and appeared in eight episodes of One Tree Hill. McKeon still acts, most notably in the recurring role of Tessa on Supernatural, but also spends a lot of her time on other ventures. Specifically, she spent the last few years off and on as a lifestyle blogger. Her now defunct website, Evolved by Lindsay, presented itself as somewhere to gather advice about health and wellness, diet, lifestyle, and relationships. She's also good friends with Chris Evans, with whom she starred on the short-lived teen show Opposite Sex. He gave a testimonial for her on her website and was interviewed by her on her YouTube channel. John Lajoie carved out a career as a comedy musician before landing on the league as Taco MacArthur. The perpetually stoned, scheming, and songwriting Taco was arguably the most popular character on the show. From the birthday song, to the mall Krampus, to the EBDB, Lajoie as Taco was responsible for some of the most memorable moments on the show. So why hasn't he been on our screens since the league wrapped? Because he's gone back to making music. Lajoie still released his own music while on the league, and after the show ended in 2015, he made it his full-time gig. He started performing serious folk rock music in 2016 under the name Wolfie's Just Fine, named after a line from Terminator 2. Wolfie's fine, honey. Wolfie's just fine. What are you? He released two albums under this new moniker by 2018. Lajoie isn't just making, in his own words, quote, terribly unfunny music. 
He also wrote several of the songs on the soundtrack for the Lego Movie 2. This includes the acclaimed tune Catchy Song, which was the end result of listening to a lot of Katy Perry, K-pop, and songs produced by Max Martin. Mimi Bobek was arguably the most iconic character on The Drew Carey Show. Drew's big, bossy, brash work nemesis was one of the most recognizable characters of the 90s and early 2000s. Kathy Kenny, the actress who played her, received much attention for the role, enhanced by her occasional appearances on Whose Line Is It Anyway in the rotating chair. Since The Drew Carey Show ended, though, Kenny has become scarce. Worry not, though, she's still using her powers for good. She now plays the character of Mrs. P on the website of the same name. The character, in contrast to her most famous role, is friendly and helpful. She reads classic children's literature to kids watching online. Kenny is proud of the role and her part in promoting literacy, noting, I think that everything I am, I owe to reading. Kenny has also written three books, including Queen of Your Own Life, The Grown-Up Woman's Guide to Claiming Happiness and Getting the Life You Deserve. Though she's mostly moved on from the role of Mimi, she donned the makeup again for a few appearances on The Price is Right. Mimi showed up as the new producer of the show, tormenting host Drew Carey, the real Drew Carey at that. Lori Beth Denberg is best remembered for her time dispensing vital information on all that, but she also had a recurring role on The Steve Harvey Show from 1998 to 2002. She played Lydia, the socially inept overachiever and the foil to main characters Romeo and Bullethead. Outside of a brief appearance in Dodgeball, though, she hasn't done much acting since. That's because, in addition to touring the nostalgia circuit, she's picked up a few new sources of income. I want to get into the other side of the business. These days, Denberg spends much of her time officiating weddings. What started as a joke between her and a friend turned into a lucrative business. Denberg says on her site, I do personalized, quirky weddings, vow renewals, and commitment ceremonies for couples looking for something a little different, a little less sterile, and a little more fun. Between 2012 and 2018 alone, she officiated 20 weddings. She's also on tour with the all-that edition of Nostalgia Personified, a show that looks back on 90s Nick shows from the perspective of Denberg, Danny Tamarelli, and Michael C. Morona. The show began touring in the fall of 2019, and it's a good way to catch more than a few people you might not have seen on TV in a while. Andrea Elson was on One Season Wonder Whiz Kids before landing her most iconic role as Lynn Tanner on ALF. One of the titular Alf's best friends and the only daughter of the Tanner clan, Lynn was a popular character on a popular series. Then Elson disappeared from the entertainment business. Where did she go? Melmac? Nope. Much closer. You can find her teaching in a California yoga studio. Elson was introduced to yoga in 1993 by her future sister-in-law and fell in love with it. She started taking training courses and soon left Hollywood behind to focus entirely on family and yoga instruction. She spent years training and opened Grass Valley Yoga in Grass Valley, California. She told Slow TV that she sold it circa 2014 when she moved to Pismo Beach and opened what is now called Yoga Village at Arroyo Grande. Currently doing business under the name Annie Hopper, she's clearly put Lynn behind her. Beach yoga is probably a better gig than acting anyway. Delane Matthews played Beth, the wife of the titular character on Dave's World. Based on the writing of Miami Herald humor columnist Dave Barry, Dave's World was a minor rating success, floating around the top 20 early on and lasting for four seasons. The show went off the air in 1997 and is mostly forgotten today, with most of the cast staying out of show business afterwards. Not Matthews, though, who soldiered on in Hollywood for years to come despite health issues. Will you stop trying to top me? You're not sicker than I am. Matthews dealt with a series of TV show cancellations, one right after the other, before landing Dave's World. After Dave's World went off the air, she had regular guest spots on various TV shows, ranging from The Shield to Saving Grace. She also had a recurring role on General Hospital from 2002 to 2003. Matthew's career ended in 2015. She was diagnosed with scoliosis when she was 13 and dealt with it throughout her career. She had over eight surgeries to the point where her spine is encased in titanium. She also deals with Hashimoto thyroid disease and post-traumatic stress. All things considered, though, she seems to be doing okay. In her own words, I loved being an actress and thought my career was my identity. It wasn't. It isn't. I've been disabled since July 1st, 2015. That isn't who I am either. Zachary Ty Bryan played Brad Taylor, the oldest and most rambunctious son on Home Improvement. Though Brad frequently got in trouble, once famously caught smoking weed, Bryan himself lived a normal life and did pretty well for himself. Years after the series ended and he left the public eye, though, he's still making a name for himself as a filmmaker and as an investor. 
Brian also continued to act, including an appearance in the Fast and Furious Tokyo Drift, before changing his focus in 2009. He founded his own production company and moved from in front of the camera to behind it. He started by producing several horror movies, including Rogue River and Prowl. He recently retooled his focus and released more popular and acclaimed movies, like 2018's The Kindergarten Teacher starring Maggie Gyllenhaal, which competed at Sundance and was sold to Netflix. Brian is also a cryptocurrency and blockchain enthusiast. He produced a movie about it called BitXBit in Bitcoin We Trust. He's a core investor in Decentric Media, a digital news network dedicated entirely to decentralized content. Additionally, he's the co-founder of Producers Market, a company attempting to streamline food distribution between producers and buyers using blockchain technology. Ian Lithgow had a recurring role on Third Rock from the Sun as Leon, one of the oblivious students in Dick Solomon's physics class. No, I'm sorry, Leon. You're wrong. No, his last name is not a coincidence. He's the son of Dick Solomon himself, John Lithgow. Ian appeared in 48 episodes of the sitcom but was seldom seen on TV again. He's still acting, but away from screens and cameras, and balances another important job with it. Ian graduated from Harvard like his father and acted for several years, including his turn on Third Rock. During this time, he acted in playhouses across the country, from Manhattan to Chicago to Pasadena. In 2005, he got his master's degree in clinical psychology from Antioch University Los Angeles and then worked as a therapist in New York City. He moved to Philadelphia in 2011 after his wife Rachel, a notable name in Jewish scholarship and nonprofit management, got a job as the executive director of the Philadelphia Holocaust Remembrance Foundation. As he told Content Delaware, he's used this time to take a break from his time as a therapist and resume stage acting. One such production was a performance of The Outgoing Tide with Peter Strauss and Michael Lernan. He has since relocated back to New York and resumed his therapy practice. So if you're in the big city and want to see a big play and then talk about your feelings after, there's at least a 50-50 chance you'll see him one way or the other. Check out one of our newest videos right here, plus even more Looper videos about your favorite stars are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.